What are you going to do when you have a great show? What are you going to do when you have a great show? You get somebody to introduce you. That's what you do. Keep that in mind. When you are a awesome person, you have someone introduce you because you're too humble to introduce yourself. So I speak of the woman that I'm about to introduce you to. This is the Coach Jess Show. Live from Canada, here to us in the States. Let's say hello to our host, Coach Jess. Hello. You know, when I grow up, I'm going to have hair one day, and it's going to be just as luxurious and full as yours. Are you going to have a fan here <laughs> so I can blow it for me? <laughs> okay, you know, you do understand that people try to imitate your show. They watch it, and then they put it on the next day or two days later, and they try to have the same flavor you bring to your show. But I just want to say this. You're awesome. So, <laughs> You're so is there a button you can push for, for awesomeness over there? Is everybody starting to roll in? Awesome! <laughs> or, wait, there's more. I love it! You guys are so great! Okay. It, it actually should just say, You're the only great person, and I'm just like here. No. But uh, I consider it an honor because. Um, all of the content that people see here on the show comes and is generated by you. It's self-generated content. I am honored that you are on Narc Abuse TV Network and uh, allow us to be able to be a part of uh, what you do in helping people. But um, I just have to ask you right now, what has it been like? You did a pilot show. This is show number, episode number five. I'm sorry, let me do that. Episode number five. Okay, so this is episode number five. You did a pilot show. Prior to that, you had to listen to me talk to you numerous times, hours on end, as if we were married. And you just sat there just taking it and going like, oh, my God, is he done yet? So that I could totally mind meld you, vulcanize you into understanding what I wanted to have happen, and then... I got out of the way. I Episode number five. <laughs> what do you say? I needed it, Paxton. I needed you. I needed uh, that liar, foundation. Liar, I liar, did. Liar, I did. Liar, liar, pencil fire. <laughs> all this information and all of this knowledge and experience and education, and I wanted to get it out there. And you <laughs> helped. <laughs> Raven's knowledge. Um, <laughs> You helped me to create this platform that I am able to just come on every couple of weeks and share some information that I think is super important um, and is hopefully usable in the world we are in today. Um, and, and we've been getting some amazing feedback. I have been getting a bunch of our audience members to take us up on that 30-minute uh, free session. So I've spoken to oh, quite a few of them now getting to know everyone who's out there in the audience, which has just been phenomenal. You guys are real people. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> that. No robots for this show. Our audience <laughs> is real. I'll tell you right now. Not just uh, I have, names on the screen. So, so we didn't scare anybody off, even though we deliberately decided we were going to do a pilot as best we could and work through kinks up to episode five here to see, uh, uh, Tootie Pooper is here, 2021. Anastasia is here. Um, art or Annie dot ru. If you want to see some good uh, professional modeling done by my my California comp uh, partner out uh, in her way, uh, feel free to check her out. She's a, a great support to the channel as well. SC uh, Cutlist is here. Events you love. Fadwa is here as well. The real Susie Walla. Hala, Susie Walla. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody that's here or passing through. Thank you for the hearts. Um, 
this is I, I'm not going to take too much longer, uh, boss, uh, coach, in doing this, but I just want you to know five episode number five. This is huge. Uh, it may not mean much uh, to a lot of people who may be stepping in. The real Susie, Hala-la. I just love saying that. See, now I got stuck. I want to keep saying that. Thank like you for the heart flavor. hearts. <laughs> just, she's got some flavor to her name. Okay. So uh, this is uh, for many of you who uh, may not know, or if not, I'm going to repeat this. Uh, this is a connection between Canada and California. Uh, my dear, beautiful uh, host and uh, friend uh, is there in uh, Canada. I am here in California, uh, near the beach here in California, as you can tell by my beautiful tan. Um, and uh, we have been able to get the pilot out of the way and get to episode five. Why is this important? This is important because there are tons of people who start projects, and uh, now you can't find them on, on Instagram or uh, YouTube or anywhere else. Their podcast is gone, their visual podcast. A lot of people are struggling to get a guess or talk about what content. Um, I, am, I am blessed to be working with you, my friend because uh, I don't have to worry about content. I just get an update, and I can keep moving right along. Uh, so everyone, please, tell a friend, because this is a live group chat, and I'm going to shut up in a moment, uh, that uh, our host, Jess, uh, she carries us through that. But if you need to reach out to someone, this is why we did this. This is why, this is why we are putting this on. If you need to talk to someone for free, you can come to this group chat. If you need to go beyond that, as Coach Jess just highlighted, please DM her, reach out to her. You are not alone. If you need to just get things off your chest and others feel, well, they're tired of hearing it or you don't think they understand you, that's why Coach Jess has her show on Narc Abuse TV Network. Feel free to reach out to this coach. She will work with you. Uh, and she will tell you much more as soon as I shut up my mouth. So I go <laughs> shutty. Thank you, my friend. Show floor is all <laughs> yours. Thank you, sir. That was a wonderful introduction as always. And uh, much appreciation, as Paxton said, to everyone who's watching, who's telling a friend, who is showing up every couple of weeks and supporting us, asking questions. Um, putting information in our chat so we have things that we can talk about that are real life um, and important and significant and and just things that are going on right now and things that you can do to navigate different experiences. Um, I also first and foremost wanted to mention if you are not in my Facebook group already, why the heck not? Go to my profile, <laughs> click on my link tree and, uh, and join the Facebook group. I have so much information there. Um, I'm going to be doing my best to start integrating a coping skills practice, maybe once a week or once every two weeks as a group. So we will just come together and practice coping skills, which is what I was talking about last week and what I will talk a little bit more about today. Want to add something in there, Paxton? Sorry, you were looking like you did. I was just uh, listening to your wisdom. Um, yeah, I, I do have to say this. Uh, I see that uh, passing through, if not stopping at this moment, is uh, Raju, who is from Perception Shifter. If anybody, please, I just want to say this, Coach, please take a little bit of your time here. By the way, if you're wondering, this show lasts for an hour and five minutes, and we literally shut it off then. An hour and five minutes of free counseling on air, per se, or, or, or you can reach out to her in private. But Perception perception shifter please like comment share follow his page the same goes for art for annie please make sure you like comment share her page as well the roots of empathy and crosby follow those pages tootie pooper all of those and by the way you know i'm stuck with this new name the real Susie waller okay i'm just i just love that name so the real Susie waller uh voila okay so coach <laughs> let's have Everyone. some fun Everyone check each other out. Everyone who's in the audience, yeah. talk to Please each do. other. We want to create that community. Um, come and join the Facebook group. Chat there. Leave information. Talk about what you need to. Invite your friends, your family, anybody and everybody. We want to, again, make this a safe place. No judgment. Hi, Sab Senna. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you again to everyone who's here. Um, 
Another thing I wanted to mention, I was talking about having a lot of people in the audience who've reached out already for their free 30 minute coaching session with me. Uh, do it if you haven't done it already. Um, I actually had someone who recommended a friend uh, contact me as well, and she's not on Facebook or Instagram rather. So she didn't even know about the show and contacted me. So tell your loved ones, your friends, anyone who could use a little bit of guidance, support perhaps with um, chronic stress or burning out, all of that, you know, that stuff that's all going on. Um, also, please follow my business page at Life Plus Coaching and the show's page at Coach Desk 2021. Uh, make sure you're following us all there so you can get all of the information on the show, what we're doing, maybe some behind the scenes stuff, all that good, that good stuff that you know you want to see. Um, so today I want to continue our discussion from last week about coping mechanisms. Uh, it, it, it's a really important topic. Like I was mentioning, I'm even um, trying to make it a regular thing to have a coping mechanism practice within my Facebook group. I truly think that coping mechanisms um, are, are something that allow us to become more resilient. Practicing them when we're calm, using them when we're anxious or stressed, uh, just being able to stabilize and regulate our own emotions is huge. Um, it makes you more confident. It, it allows you to take more risks because you know that you're able to deal with certain situations. Um, so I want to equate coping mechanisms with independence. I want to have a, a bit of a discussion on how those two things are so, so linked. So independence, um, as we all know, is about being able to take care of yourself. It doesn't mean isolation. Independence and isolation are not the same thing. Isolation is uh, something that, you know, it, it, it's an unhealthy coping mechanism that some people uh, foray into when they're having a hard time. Um, and this is, you know, it kind of looks like pushing people away. It looks like um, not taking calls, not reaching out when you need help, that kind of stuff. Independence, on the other hand, um, is knowing how to solve your own problems, essentially. And that can include reaching out to people. It doesn't mean you know how to solve your problems all by yourself. It just means you know what to do to take you from A to B. And having coping mechanisms and coping skills, healthy coping mechanisms, will allow you to be more independent, right? Which will allow you to see things in a bit more clear perspective. If you're depending on someone, for things like basic necessities, um, for you know all of the uh, adulation that you need, or the congratulations, the celebrations when you achieve something. If you're depending on one person for all of the stuff that you need um, outside of yourself, that's going to create a very unhealthy dynamic, which is a lot of um, what people who have experienced life with a narcissist uh, have gone through as well. So. Um, that relevance here, it's, it's all linked together. Um, and I just want to highlight the importance of having those coping skills. I'm just going to pause for a second so I can answer Fadwa's uh, question yeah. here. My you, you, beat, you beat me to it. <laughs> I did Go notice, ahead, was, even oh, without man. glasses. <laughs> okay, I, I noticed that. I wasn't going to say anything. I didn't say a word. I didn't say a word. <laughs> no, you have glasses. You have glasses. I do, I do. They decorate yeah. my head nicely. Yes, there yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Fadwa, the group name is Better Than Okay. And uh, on the on the Facebook group page, you'll see a picture of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the things that I talk about in my group there is the cover page. And just make sure that you answer the questions there and agree to the rules. Uh, it's really important that people who want to join the group agree to the rules because I really want that to be a safe place. And part of the rules is that uh, things that go on inside the group, things that other people talk about, uh, is not to be discussed outside of the group. Now, obviously, that is a uh, self-honesty, um, self-policing policy, but I do want to make sure that that is understood when people are entering that group, just to make sure everyone feels comfortable sharing what they want to. All right, so if you have any trouble finding that group, just let me know. If you go to my bio page, my Instagram, um, at Life Plus Coaching, there is a link tree that I have there. You click on that, and you can find the link to my page right inside the tree there. So um, let me know if you have any difficulty. Uh, you can always comment underneath this show 
DM me directly at my Life Plus Coaching page, and uh, I can help you out with that if, if that's causing some issues for you. Um, so I hope that is that is clear on how to find that. Uh, perfect. There's so many people joining us, Patsy. Pretty lovely. You, 7P, Life Path 22. Thank you guys so much for joining us or, or passing through. Um, today we're talking if, uh, about... If I, may, if I may, boss, yeah. if I may, coach, yeah, please. Uh, everyone, please, by all means, uh, keep in mind that Facebook group. Uh, our objective is to have this as an opportunity for people to visually group chat uh, have a visual group chat with us uh, that we're right here and you can see us. This is spearheaded, of course, uh, by Coach Jess. It is her show and her content, but it's your participation. We thank you for, for being here. Uh, everyone, please make sure you uh, like, comment, share, follow. Uh, also, uh, Secret Beauty uh, that's here. Uh, pretty lovely you, uh, Devin P. Uh, make sure that uh, you like, comment, share, Fadwa. And uh, feel free, as many have, that come through here and uh, talk with one another and encourage one another, uh, fortify one another, leave the room uh, that we're in here with one another, a peaceful place. But if you step over in the clubhouse, you have to see the queen of clubhouse, and that's the life path 22. What, I've just sold my tongue. I don't know where it went, coach. Uh, the life path 22. Uh, feel free to get connected with Vanessa. She uh, takes care of clubhouse there. Vivian is in here, uh, boss, as well as uh, Salvatore uh, is here as well. So everyone, welcome. Coach, please, back to you. Beautiful. Thank you. Welcome, you guys, so much. And, and thank you for joining us uh, Beyond Lashes. We have so many beautiful people coming through here. It's making me very, very excited. <laughs> They're not here to see me. <laughs> here for you. Hey, I got a question. You were talking about coping mechanisms. Uh, why is why is isolation um, something that can be extremely detrimental? I know the answer may be simple, but sometimes it's hard when someone just doesn't feel like interacting with others because they feel overwhelmed. Isolation, it's bad. It is. It, it, but it, it can, but it can, but it can be something that others can feel like they need to do. Don't even try to go there. Don't even try to, don't even try to, I see you right now, trying to cover your mouth. I know what's going to happen. You go fire me. I know what's going to happen. You go like, Paxson, this is my show. Shut up. No. You got your own show. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, Thank I love you. your question. Thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> Vanessa says I asked a great question. Now I'm going to go did. back to my hole. Go back to my hole over here. Drink my vodka. I no, I'm just kidding. I'm not, I'm not drinking vodka. Either. Go ahead. Go on. It's, your, it's a your great show. question. Let me turn my console question. off. <laughs> Oh, you're she gave funny. me a dirty look. Did you guys see that? She gave me no, the evil eye. <laughs> it's because I started answering before you were done, so I had to cover my own mouth. <laughs> I got you excited. Not worthy. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Do your thing. Your show. That's a great question. Great question. Let and uh, there are so <laughs> many. <laughs> let, me let me turn there my mic off. <laughs> Action. <Go ahead>. <laughs> <laughs> I see how it is. I see how it is. You got that expensive equipment. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it is a very, very important question. But I, I also appreciate um, you asking these questions because it's not always easy for the audience members to necessarily ask questions that they have. And so I appreciate uh, you pulling me out of my lecture and asking some questions so I'm not just droning on and on for the rest of the show. <laughs> um, isolation is very dangerous for so many reasons. Um, first and foremost, if you're isolated, if you are isolating yourself, if you already have medical conditions and you're not reaching out and letting people know how you're doing, how is someone going to know if you need help? First and foremost, it could actually be detrimental to your life, right? Like, um, you know, an older person who falls over and, and can't get a hold of anybody because they've isolated themselves to the point that no one, no one comes over, no one checks on them. You know, it, it can be very, very dangerous. Um, in less extreme situations um we actually we get a lot out of being near other people as with all mammals we are social creatures we we need to be around each other it, it's good for us it releases really great happy chemicals in our brains um some people uh, or some studies i've actually read recently say that if your nervous system 
is not being regulated in a healthy manner, being around somebody else who, whose is can actually help yours get back into that proper rhythm momentum that our nervous system needs to be in. So it, it's a type of co-regulation that can actually happen when you're around somebody who has a healthier nervous system than you were experiencing at the time. Um, another reason, abusive people. If, if someone is you know, isolating themselves because they're in an abusive relationship, whether that be with a family member, a friend, a romantic partner, um, anybody in your life, then you don't necessarily recognize the signs of abuse as you might if you were talking to someone else about it and your experience and what's going on for you. So you might miss these red flags, these signs, um, you know, the saying, you can't see the forest for the trees. So you, mm -hmm. you might need an external opinion. You might need to talk to somebody who is just like, what is going on in your house right now? What is going on with you guys? Like, you might need someone to shake that up and just tell you, like, that's not right, right? And which leads me to back to that coping mechanism necessity. If we have one person in our life and all of our coping mechanisms even revolve around that person, because mm -hmm. we can have different styles of coping mechanisms, like asking for support, relaxing, um, processing our emotions. But if all of these revolve around one person in our life and um, nobody else, if that person's absent, if that person's busy, if that person uh, doesn't have the time, if they get sick, if they are abusive, then mm -hmm. that's all you're left with. And then you don't have any coping skills or, or management because it all revolves around this one person who doesn't want to do that for you anymore or can't. Right? And so it, it brings us back to having a variety of coping skills, having a large support network, as large as you can, right? A support network doesn't mean you're best friends with everybody. It could just right. be, you know, that one person you like to go for a bike ride with on Saturdays that helps clear your mind. That's, that's mm -hmm. a support, right? It doesn't have to, have to be someone you sit there and cry with. Um, support looks different. It, 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 there's so many different styles of it. It could be someone you have deep conversations with. It could be someone you go to the farmer's market with. Uh, it, it doesn't really have to look the same way for everyone. Um, I see, you know, Kelly here, she is saying that she didn't notice the signs. And I'm assuming she's talking about an abusive person in her life. And, and that is and can be a very dangerous thing when you're getting all of your information, all of your feedback, all of your critique from one person. You are not uh, getting a, a healthy perspective, right? It's just that one person. You're not, you're not getting... Um, different experience it's just one person, their perspective their opinion and then you almost adopt that when you don't have other people around you you become most like the five people you spend most of your time with uh, you just take on those traits it's just what we do it it also has to do with the fact that we seek out people who we either want to like or who we feel comfortable around um so there already might be traits in common but it's a fact so if you only have one person in your life you're gonna you're gonna become like them or at least mold to their personality and become dependent in some way. Right? So it can be again dangerous in so many facets. Um and the life path, I think you said her name is Veronica Paxton. Um the no path twenty two, no? I, I never I never said that. I um do we do we do we need you to have your glasses back on or you're hearing text <laughs> because I'm just me <laughs> I'm messing I with you. Swear you I swear you did. I was waiting for this next show so I could tease you about your glasses being on. All right, so the life path 22, that's Vanessa. Vanessa, sorry, thank you. By the way, <laughs> thank you, Vanessa, for participating in FADWA and uh, RPA 13. Love 7 Angels has just arrived. Uh, Paula uh, uh, Seligman Coaching is here as well. Uh, a, a great guest that uh, I had uh, on the show, um, but her name is Vanessa Boss. Vanessa. Uh, please don't fire me for correcting you on I'm air. I'm so sorry. No, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Thank you so much for your comment. It is very validating to speak to people who've been through it um, or have been through things you've been through. That is why I'm very vocal about my experiences. It's not always lovely to hear about or 
nice to chat about childhood abuse or uh, neglect, but those are my experiences. Those are things that I grew up in and, and got through. And so when I speak to people who are experiencing that now or um, had experienced that, it does give you a whole different dynamic. It allows you to relate on so many different levels, um, not just with my education, um, but also with my actual personal experiences. And it is incredibly validating to hear that someone else uh, responds to that like you do or reacts to that like you do. And it's not something abnormal, but it's in fact very key. Yeah. And then Fadwa here, what if a narcissist has been purposely made a medical condition worse to take away my independence and freedom to isolate me, yet he made sure everyone thinks he's Mr. Nice in a certain way? That is absolutely abusive. Um, that is essentially, like you're saying, stripping away your freedom. Um, not only that, but if he's making a medical condition worse, that is that's also physically abusive, right? So um, you have a few different types of abuse going on if this is the situation that you're experiencing. Um, I would definitely make sure that you're able to reach out to somebody if you don't have somebody in your life who you can trust. Uh, maybe everyone else is in contact with this person. Um, maybe they have, you know, what's that word? recruited other people to encourage the abuse or whatever it might be. If he is, you know, acting one way towards you and then acting different towards other people, he's you know, having this double identity, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type deal. You don't know maybe if um, things that you say to people that you both know will get back to him. So if that's the situation, I would recommend uh, contacting a domestic abuse helpline in your area. Um, you don't have to press charges to take advantage of domestic abuse helplines in your area. Uh, they can help steer you in different directions of different resources in your community. Um, a, a quick Google search will usually tell you the information for contacting those uh, domestic abu abuse um, shelters or, or lifelines or contact lines. Um, reach out and ask people for help. You don't need to necessarily make this known to everybody in your life if you're not comfortable doing that yet. Um, but I would highly recommend if you don't have at least you know two or three people in your life that you can be honest with about what's going on, contact a professional. Speak with a professional because then you have at least this one lifeline or two lifelines, these people that know what's actually going on, right, and can record what's actually going on with you. Um, another recommendation that I would make if this, if this is going on uh, consistently, constantly, and regularly, keep a journal of what's been going on. Uh, keep a journal of their actions. Keep a journal of how it's affecting you, days, times, specific information that you could potentially use later if needed but also information to remind you that, you know, if you're being gaslit or somebody's telling you something didn't happen, you can actually go back and see this timeline of events in your own words, in your own handwriting, um, and at your own discretion, right? So you're going to have this available to you uh, when you need it or when it will be helpful for you. Um, Badwa, if you want to talk about that a little bit more, please DM me. Um, I can... Uh, potentially help you navigate finding those resources in your community if that's a hard thing for you to do. And I'm more than happy to, to help you do that. Um, so please reach out if you need to. And please ask any more questions if my response here wasn't clear or if you need more information about that. Or more, again, about the situation. And, uh, Fadwa, uh, sorry, go ahead. Fad, Fadwa highlights that, uh, uh, that is chal the challenge that she's confronted with uh, because uh, she she has no one. Fadwa, tell us some more. When you get a chance, Fadwa, tell us some more. Uh, Vanessa highlights the fact that uh, she says, Fadwa, you have the community here. We are family. So, Fadwa, please tell us some more when you get a chance to be able to do so. You, you Coach, you, you gave out some really good suggestions and some information uh, there that can be very helpful when someone uh, is going through a situation. What are some things we can do when it comes to coping mechanisms that you are highlighting 
when someone is in a situation uh, that they feel uh, is insurmountable. It, it, when, when, when things can seem like there's no way out, what are some coping mechanisms? You mentioned hotlines and, and other ways uh, if it escalates to that. When it comes to situations of fighting that feeling that a person can feel they're alone, what are some things that they can do? Because I know you're ready to help. Always, always, always. They can always reach out to me. Sadwa, you can DM me through my Instagram profile at Life Plus Coaching. I just want to make sure that you know how to find that. Um, I think Paxton will also tag my account in this video once posted. So if it's uh, if you're having difficulty spelling it or anything like that, don't worry. You can come back and find that here. Um, the biggest thing that we really can do when we're feeling helpless, hopeless, alone, isolated, is practice gratefulness. And I know it sounds so opposite of what's going on. And it, it, being grateful doesn't mean you have to have a perfect life. Being grateful doesn't mean you even have to be in the best position in your life. Being grateful is simply acknowledging that you don't have nothing. Right? There are things, and when we feel hopeless and helpless, we tend to focus on the problems, on the issues. Um, being grateful can look like writing a list of accomplishments that you've achieved in your life. And it doesn't have to be, you know, getting a university degree or, um, you know, getting a, a six-figure job. It can look like, you know, um, getting all your laundry put away the day before. It can look like getting out of bed if you're suffering from depression. It can look like reaching out and talking to a friend if normally that's not something that you can do, right? It, it, you can be proud of yourself for even the small accomplishments when, when things are difficult to do in the world, right? So uh, one aspect of gratefulness is just being appreciative for the things that you have been able to do, which also highlights our abilities to ourselves and increases our confidence to be able to solve problems moving forward. Another thing that builds that confidence is practicing coping skills. So there are hundreds of different coping skills. You can make up your own coping skills. It really just has to do with um, settling your fight or flight. It really has to do with calming your, uh, your central nervous system, regulating your emotions, having stable emotions and ability, um, and, and really just having that ability to calm yourself and settle yourself down. So whether for you that looks like visualizing, you know, your happy place, closing your eyes and doing some breathing techniques while you're visualizing a happy place, this can, this can relax, this can distract, this can check a bunch of different ways that we cope but you're in control of that. You get to do that when you want to. So it's not like you have to be all prepared to do these coping skills. It can be as simple as that, right? It doesn't have to be some meditation that you listen to for an hour. It can really just be 10 minutes, five minutes, one minute of you visualizing that relaxing place. Coping skills really depend on what it is you're coping with. Right? And of course, it's going to be stress or anxiety or negative emotion, but it's the root of the issue that is going to dictate the action plan for COVID. Right? And if there is an actual solvable issue, the reason we need coping skills to calm ourselves down is to then deal with the issue, not just remain calm, but be calm enough to deal with the issue. Right? So um, in that situation that Thad was talking about, uh, having coping skills to calm yourself down when this person is uh, taking away your independence further and further, relax yourself, be able to get into a state where you can brainstorm different coping skills to, to stop that reach potentially, right? To reduce the amount of effect, uh, or effect you can have on that. So it's very, very uh, reliant on the situation, the way that we will go about dealing with it. 
but learning different coping skills will never be a waste of time, right? Um, there was a study I was recently reading, and it was talking about how the variety of coping skills and the flexibility that we have in using coping skills will create or will allow us to have more of a positive adjustment to society and people. And not only that, it, it not only promotes the positive, but it actually reduces the negative, right? So when you have positive, healthy coping skills that you are using and going through, it's going to reduce the amount of negative coping skills it, it, because you don't need them because you have so many other things that you can try that are going to that are going to work, right? And it's just about finding those things that work for you. When it comes to um, actually making changes and putting into place positive thinking as you kind of touched on there highlighted to us this is something that can be challenging for a lot of people because maybe their lifestyle has been to notice what was wrong and what others do wrong toward them so there may have to be and i'm going to steal this line uh, from raju who was here either here now or here earlier a guest that i had uh, he, he highlighted there needs to be a, percep a perception shift. We may need to change our perception and take our focus away from what is wrong to creating what needs to happen. Uh, and the, the reason I'm highlighting that is because there was a posting that you had um, in, in which you said nothing changes if we don't change it. That's the posting. But it's what you said after that that I truly found very encouraging. Maybe it'll be encouraging right now, uh, not that you're going to remember the posting, but, it, but listening to you speak right now, Coach, it made me think of this posting. Because right now, each and every day, people are losing someone in death, people are dealing with abuse, people are dealing with childhood abuse and trauma that keeps coming back uh, and, and uh, flooding into their mind. People are dealing with a number of things. But you said, unless and until you decide to do something about it, and then you listed these things, to take action, to learn new skills, to create a better present and future, it's okay if you don't know how, if you don't know where to start. That is quite literally what I am here for, is what you wrote to guide and support you in balancing your mental wellness and resiliency with your high achieving professional goals and desires. Why is it important for you to have this show and hear everyone's troubles? It allows me to focus my experience, education, and information. It, it, it allows me to focus that in on these common issues that are occurring, on the common information that people are missing that can help. Um, it, it allows me to like hear and see all of the different uh, issues people are dealing with, but create not necessarily general answers or responses, but the most helpful thing that will help as many people as possible when I'm creating content like on Instagram or this show for my Facebook group, it allows me to actually help because I can hear from other people what it is they're dealing with and going through, what it is they're missing from their toolkit that is going to allow them to deal with these difficulties because we're always going to have difficulties. Life is, is not easy. It has stresses. And, you know, if, if we want to like achieve things, do things, get out of our comfort zone, it can be hard, it can be difficult, and especially if you've had trauma and other awful things that have happened in your life, it can be really, really difficult, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible. And the only person who can change that is you. Nobody can force you to do better for yourself. And nobody can force you to see an issue that you don't see is an issue. And so it really starts with us and our own self-reflection. And that was actually a really big point that I wanted to talk about 
um, today as well is self-observation with these coping skills because we don't know what is going to work as a coping skill if we don't know how to view ourselves and observe ourselves and track how things work for us and how we feel and how much better something makes us feel, what we can accomplish after we engage in this coping mechanism. We need to be able to see ourselves for who we are. Now, that doesn't mean judging yourself. That doesn't mean putting yourself down. But it does mean taking a realistic view of yourself. And that can include talking to other people, like your friends, your family. How people see you is, is an important part of self as well, right? Because you could be thinking, oh, I'm so helpful. Anytime my friends have a problem, I always have answers for them. But then behind your back, your friends could be like, oh, whenever I talk to that person, they just want to talk about themselves and, you know, their great ideas instead of listening to the issues I'm having. So it's really important that we have a well-rounded view of ourselves mm -hmm. so that we know what coping mechanisms are going to work. And then when we try them, how to tell if they're working. Because it's kind mm -hmm. of useless if we're just throwing things and, you know, seeing what sticks to the wall. And then we don't even remember what actually worked for us or not. So it's important to be able to see yourself and view yourself. And, and to get back to your question, when I talk to our audience, when I talk to these individual people who have mm -hmm. extraordinary lives of their own and unique experiences, I get to have a sense of what I can do to help the most people possible with the information and experience. Because uh, I'm recognizing, and again, everyone, uh, uh, by the way, Chelsea Jules says hello uh, to us. And uh, Anastasia, uh, art for Annie, uh, is uh, here again as well. Schoolboy, you, uh, and uh, I'm looking at uh, Nana. I'm just going to say Nana <laughs> uh, here as well. And uh, a few others, uh, Vanessa. Uh, Bakewell, others that have passed through are still here. Um, this is episode number five. Uh, I know what has went into everything before she got to this point of doing this show uh, where she truly wants to help people. But it's really you as an audience that makes the difference because this open live group chat is for everyone to be able to express themselves and hopefully find practical solutions that will help you move forward. Challenging, indeed it is, because it, it requires a great deal of self-reflection and to allow positivity to take over. It can be very challenging. You work with individuals. Um, look, Vanessa, who's from the Life Path 22, she works with individuals. Anastasia was on a, a show uh, we just did the other day and uh, she tries to help people. And many others that are here, perce Perception Shifter, and a number of others, coaches that have been passing through here. Paula uh, Seligman that was here earlier, uh, if she's even still here. Uh, others uh, try to work with individuals in different ways. You have this show. And many of them don't have their show. They have a page. You have a show, and you've been able to talk to, I could tell you how many. I just don't have the number in front of me because I have a list of everybody that has passed through that you've talked to. You've talked to a number of people, but you're not done, are you? No. You want to reach more people, don't you? I absolutely do. So that means you have to do more episodes. I sure do. <laughs> if that's the case, if you had to say a few things that people need to keep in mind, when it comes to coping mechanisms, because that's the, that's the part of the discussion you wanted us to go down today, coping mechanisms. There are a lot of things that get in the way of trying to cope. Is it possible that blame shifting and handing accountability and responsibility to someone else can be a problem when it comes to coping? Absolutely, absolutely. If we don't see the issues for what they actually are and the real reasons that they exist and our contribution to them, then we can't fix or change anything. Um, we need to have that real, you know, self-reflection. We really do. Um, and if you are in a situation that is causing you distress and you're unable to 
find any way that you are in control of that situation, um, you can, really depends, right? So if, if it's an abusive situation, of course, I'm always going to suggest someone leaves if they can do that safe. Um, but if it's a situation that we have to put up with for some reason, for instance, uh, a boss, right? A boss in, in your career, you've been working years to get where you are, and you have to deal with this boss, and it might just be a temporary thing, but it's someone who really just, uh, you can't deal with them. A perspective shift, like you were talking about, can help us deal in those situations. Reminding yourself that a situation is temporary is a wonderful coping mechanism. Um, it can be in, in, in by way of an affirmation, you know, like this too shall pass. Whatever it is that you need to remind yourself that that situation is temporary, do that, right? If it's a situation that is going to take time or difficulty to get out of or change, write down the small things that you can do about it now. Write down a bit of a timeline about how long maybe it will take you to change, right? Like, show yourself that you are taking steps to change that situation or to get out of it. And if you can remind yourself that you every day that you are working on that, then it's going to be less stressful for you because you are taking control in a way that you can. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> No, no, you, you make valid sense. I, I think there's a lot on the screen. I don't know if you can still catch it. I, I, there I can is. pull it Actually, back and I, forth. I want to go back go to Fadwa just because um, she, she brings a really good point here. It's hard to think positive when you're in physical pain 24-7. can no longer do much of anything that you used to, and it's all been purposely destroyed by making this MS illness was by me main, uh, maintained. So... Dealing with an illness like that, a chronic illness like MS, um, first of all, that is incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult. Um, I am assuming dealing with MS, you have doctors, right? I would recommend speaking with a doctor. I would recommend letting your doctor know what's going on. I would recommend um, having this medical professional or multiple medical professionals. I would recommend letting them know what's going on they are going to be in a position, and probably the best position aside from a domestic abuse uh, shelter, which may have some kind of specialization with chronic illness or things like that. But I do believe a doctor who is uh, helping you with this illness is going to have the best information for you. And they are going to be in a position where, uh, in reality, I guess it's going to be depending on where you live. I can't say this for every country, every city, um, but they're going to be in a position where they have to. Well, I, I find I find that uh, your your positivity has has uh, well, it's motivated a lot of people to say a number of different things today. Uh, Anastasia, that's that's pretty good. I tried not to laugh when she said it, but it said quit the job. So that's actually <laughs> the, when you started talking about a boss yep. and so forth. That that could be a very very productive uh, coping mechanism if, if it can be uh, something that you can do. Uh, yeah. Great answer, my friend, uh, Anastasia. That, that's actually funny. Um, so I'm going to, I have to go back to something that others were saying here. Uh, boss, uh, let me get my little thing here and get going over here. Here we are over here. Uh, I'm going to go back to, uh, let's see here. Uh, I have to throw this in. Uh, let's see here. Uh, is, isn't the reason uh, the reason is always inside is what Anastasia had mentioned uh, when it comes to, uh, I believe we were talking about, uh, I don't forgot what we were just talking about. I, I thought I remembered it when she said it and then it, it stuck. And then we, we started talking about uh, someone else. I forgot. Uh, Anastasia, remind me why you mentioned that, but it's a Please. good point. <laughs> Uh, don't get old, everybody. That's me. All right. Uh, the life path, Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa says, yes, yeah, she's agreeing with, uh, I believe, Anastasia's thought there. Both of you, feel free to chime in and correct me. Of course, uh, Anastasia said, quit the job. Uh, Danny Smith, 74. You got me. Uh, my hands are tied. It says, I am married too. Um, I'm lost on that one. So help me out there. I'm just a guy. Um, and... We have Anastasia here, and we also have Superwoman Anastasia. 
uh, who's here. Both have been a guest uh, on the uh, Narc Abuse TV show, but both thank you for being here right now. Uh, Anastasia, Anastasia, who's working on a documentary uh, on abuse, says, uh, powerful, remind yourself that the situation is temporary. I think that's what they were agreeing on with you or something like that. Uh, we're going to get to that in a moment. Thank you for sharing. Uh, she's sending love to you, Coach, uh, at Coach Jess. Um, the situation is temporary. Vanessa agreeing with you there. Poor connection for, for uh, B. Vita. Or, I'm sorry to hear that. Hopefully you can get us there. Uh, at uh, you, Jess, they're saying thank you. Uh, such great inspiration. That's very kind of you, Vanessa, uh, for doing so. Um, Anastasia says it is always inside, uh, irrespective of the point, irrespective of what's going on. I, I'm assuming that's what yeah, she's highlighting. I think, I think maybe her point is that the answer is always kind of within you. And that can be, uh, it is true. It is 100% true. The issue is it can get buried under all sorts of other stuff. <laughs> that gets put on us by, you know, other people, society, uh, expectations, family members. It can be buried under a lot of stuff. So uh, trying to, to get to that can be the issue sometimes. Like what stuff? <laughs> Uh, like abuse, like trauma, like negative experience um, with being yourself and trying to be yourself and um, trying to, it, like, uh, I guess, trying to bring that out, trying to be your genuine self and, and human. And maybe you had bad experiences in high school or elementary school or back when you were young that you couldn't really understand where people, you know, made you feel bad about being yourself and living true to the answers that exist within you. And so sometimes we need to reconnect with that part of ourselves and remind ourselves that the answer is in there and it's the answer for us. It doesn't have to be the answer for everyone. We, we can get caught up in other people's selfishness. Is, is that a possibility Absolutely. that their selfishness and lack of empathy and manipulation can cause us to lose sight if you're saying the answer is inside of us, I'm looking at others' con uh, comments here. Change yourself, the world would change. Um, of course, Danny says she, she lost connection. Hopefully she'll be back or is with us now. Oh, connected. Uh, you get some hearts on the screen. Many have gone across. Um, when it comes to our viewpoint of what we're going through, a lot of it has to do with how we see ourselves or the other person, what uh, what we're going through, how can we navigate? So our perspective is uh, our experience, right? Our, our perspective is all of our experiences kind of funneled into the present moment and what we're experiencing now. So it really depends on what, what our experiences have accumulated to and, uh, what we what we have prunes or not prunes, right? And so when we take a reflective look at ourselves, we can go back and and take the time to go through uh, impactful experiences. Like for instance, if you the next time you have a negative emotion um, and it's associated with something that you're doing or seeing or whatever's going on in in the moment, try to think back to the very first time you ever felt the most impactful time that you felt that. Um, and, and it will usually bring you to some kind of a situation uh, where you're likely quite a bit younger, you likely don't have a fully developed brain yet, and you're likely simply reacting to a situation uh, with the resources you have at the time, so not necessarily a fully developed adult brain. Um, but with your adult brain now, you can go back to that and you can fill in the missing logic and rationale that didn't exist when you were younger because you didn't have that part developed yet. And we can almost replay these experiences and analyze them for ourselves and what they would mean to us now if they happen now, right? Like when I was a kid and I was bullied, um, <laughs> I would like I would react much differently now. Um, the, the really, sort of, really now. The assertiveness that I have built in myself um, based on going back through those experiences, based on my education, based on information and, and, and other experiences, um, has allowed me to become 
an assertive individual who would now never allow someone to speak to me the way that people have in the past. But mm -hmm. that takes that reflection. And that takes that reflection combined with the genuineness of who we are. And we need to meld those two. And, and that's how we move forward. That is what the growth mindset is, right? The growth mindset is what, it, what propels us forward to get better and better and do better, learn more, do more, and continue that cycle of growth, right? Where our limited mindset, which is the opposite of the growth mindset, keeps us mm -hmm. stuck and stagnant and scared, usually. Three S's. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so, so, so let's let's do this. Let me see if I understand this correctly, because mm -hmm. I'm just the guy. <laughs> I'm just the guy on the internet. <laughs> okay, so if we take what Anastasia said, if we change. We can change the world. If we look at some of the things Vanessa highlighted about uh, being positive and, and others that are mentioning things here, and from what you said, Coach, because you're driving this conversation, in order for us to be able to move away from the negative situations, even if they were generated outside of ourselves and they're not self-inflicted, we have to want to move toward being positive. We have to want, we have to choose to be happy instead of saying the reason I am not happy is because this person is doing this to me. I think before we can choose to be happy, we have to know that we deserve to be happy. A person can deserve to be happy and not know it, but for them to find out that they deserve to be happy, what's the steps? There's not really that many steps. You're a human, you're here on this earth, and you're here for your own unique experience, and you truly deserve to be happy. That's, that's it, right? It's just, it's the truth mm -hmm. for, for every single one of us, you know? Inside every single one of us is the child we once were. And whenever you see a child, what do you want most for them? To be happy and safe. Mm -hmm and experience everything that they can about life. Treat yourself like that child, right? Why is it easy to see that in someone outside of you but not yourself? You're not perfect. Nobody is perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you might have made mistakes in the past, right? You might have hurt people um, or hurt yourself or, or done things that you wouldn't do moving forward, but that's where the point is. You're not going to do it moving forward. So you are not still that same person. Even if someone wants to convince, reshape someone to think, no, you're still that person. It's just fundamentally not true if a person is moving away from that. You, you got uh, a number of things that have been happening on the screen. Um, I like where you're taking us today in this live group chat. When we're talking about coping mechanisms, being able to cope, we've dug a little bit deeper, which I love to do, which is why I love doing these shows. It's one thing for somebody to post a meme or say they're a coach or do this or that, but to have these shows where we can take moments, technically an hour and five minutes, to go, to go deeper, because I start to pass out after that. So we can go a little bit deeper. Um, you've done that, but look at the chat. I mean, some points that are being made here. For example, well, uh, Vanessa uh, uh, makes a point as, as well as Anastasia. Anastasia says, absolutely. Amazing explanation. Agreed 100% of anesthetists totally relate to, to what you're saying there, Coach. Uh, notice this, uh, she, uh, what's made here. Anastasia says, dissect and find out what is you and what are your CPTSRs. Okay, you guys, man, you, listen, you guys, I'm just a ghetto boy with the show. You guys can't be using all these big terms on me. I don't know what she, do you know what she's talking about? I, I don't, don't know that, unfortunately. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, yeah, but a, Anastasia, if you can why let you us do it, know. Yeah. Why are you gonna do why are you gonna do us like that on live on so live free cryptic. TV? It's so cryptic. <laughs> uh Danny Danny Smith seventy four says my biggest struggle is he has cheated and continues to look and flirt with other women constantly. It eats me alive. Everyone just thinks I am insecure. I guess I am. Well, one thing I do know is is this. 
this is not my show. So this is where I can say, go ahead, coach. <laughs> Sorry, I, who did you say said that? Danny Smith, 74. I don't know if you can see that. Go back a little bit. Oh, here we go. She did continues to look and flirt with other women. My question to you would be, what can he do to you to make you feel more secure in the relationship? And is he willing to do that? That is a conversation I believe that the two of you would need to have. Um, I don't think it's necessarily, see, being insecure comes with this connotation that it's your fault that you're insecure. But that's not true. If he's not making you feel secure in the relationship, then you can be insecure without it being something that you're doing to yourself. However, having this conversation is something that you can do to take control of the situation. And you need to decide uh, for yourself if he's not willing to do that, if you are continuing to be willing to, to be in that relationship. Because if your security does not matter to him, then what is the point with your relationship to you? So this is a bit of self-reflection that you can do um, uh, and to have that conversation. But first and foremost, uh, you need to ask yourself and dig deep and find out what he can do to bring that security back to you. It is, it is, uh, it is great inf- advice that you're giving there um, in, in this, uh, this discussion uh, concerning what, what Danny Smith, 74, wrote. Um, you know, I've come to learn by listening to you after these many shows and uh, our original, I don't know, three shows we did together. You know, you move everyone toward a positive, proactive solution. I, I truly love your style. You, you, you don't just say, hey, that person is wrong and let me list all the things they do. You literally move people, you shift people from where they are to a positive place so they can just spread their wings and fly. So that's why I highlighted the fact that a person has to move from one place to another, especially if it's the same continuous problem that's being discussed. There's a pretty good chance that we're, we're not having a discussion with the person we need to. And that's what you just highlighted. You highlighted that there needs to be a, com- a communication conversation. Absolutely. It may be a hard one. <laughs> but it's gonna the hard one is gonna end real quick comparison to a lifetime of continuing continuing to talk about the same thing. That can be very challenging. For some it means, you know what, I don't want to listen to you, Paxton, anymore, or Coach Jess. But I tell you this much, you have highlighted numerous times that communication is essential. Just cut to the chase, have the conversation, have the boundaries, and you're either gonna Stay or move forward. But no one is going to treat us any better if we don't communicate with them, man or woman. I mean, I've listened to a number of people in a year now. Men cheat, women cheat, children cheat on tests. Children lie to their parents. So these things do happen. But your advice is very important because you're saying what a number of people are saying here. Um. Anastasia says, repeat that. Talking to, talking to you, I guess. She says, repeat that. You deserve to be happy million of times daily. You'll be, you, you'll leave eventually, I guess. You'll believe, I think she you'll was. Be- oh, to you'll believe eventually, right. And that's you'll believe actually it. very true. Daily affirmations are incredibly powerful. There is no voice more powerful in the world than your own in your head. So if you can have these affirmations that you lay out for yourself every day, you know, scream it at yourself in the mirror, in the shower, let everyone in the Mm -hmm. house know what's going on first. Um, But if you can do that, you will convince yourself, right? You will convince yourself Mm -hmm. that you deserve to be happy. You will convince yourself that you're strong and you can handle anything. Because our own voice is so powerful, it does work. And that's also why the gratefulness works. We are in that moment when we're being grateful we are taking our brain and we are shifting it to positive mode. You can't be grateful and anxious at the same time. You can't be grateful and helpless at the same time. Mm-hmm. Your brain can't True. do that. Right? Yep. So when we're stuck in negative, we just see negative. When we're stuck in positive, we just see positive. And it takes a while to make that shift. It's daily consistent exercises. It's not easy, but it's worth it. It's and, so and it is, worth it. you know, what's so amazing about this, this open chat for everybody here that's spearheaded by Coach Jess, my boss, 
by the way, I need a raise. Um, the <laughs> Coach, <laughs> Coach Jess, uh, this show that she puts here on Narc Abuse TV Network. Um, I, just real quick, boss. Um, uh, Life Path 22 says that uh, she says, thank you both very much uh, for a great show. I have to leave. Thank you for having this community. Whether you hear this back later or you're still here as you're leaving, exiting, thank you very much, Vanessa, for being here. And uh, I appreciate you greatly for contributing. Uh, what I was going to highlight uh, that you've talked about, and you even mentioned it again a little bit earlier, uh, we are, as many people often heard, we are the sum of whoever we associate with. We are who we associate with. The reality of it is, a fundamental principle governed fact is, we are whoever we associate with. Bad association will spoil everything about us if we're associating with the wrong person. It'll spoil all our good habits. So if we're hanging out with people who are negative, there's a very strong, mm, it's a pretty good chance. Coach, you know where I'm going with that. You said, you said it earlier. What, five people? What did you say earlier? <laughs> five people that you surround yourself with, yeah. Yeah. So if we're, if we're in a situation and it's negative and all of our friends have negative situations, there's a pretty good chance uh, one's contributing to the other and we may need some new friends or we need to separate ourselves from that. Um, you got a lot happening. I can read it all to you if you want me to, boss. Yes, please. I love your voice. Okay, let me go back. You're so cool. You don't even try it. Don't even. I still want to raise. Don't even think. I want to <laughs> raise. Too, Everybody me heard too. me. Every. Hey, hey, hey. Don't even talk. Don't. Even, I know you got that Canadian money. Canadian money stashed in your mattress over there. You, you and your family. Okay, so cold winter twenty three says some people are just too blind by the word love when it's time to leave you and uh, to leave you and run. Uh, by the way, thank you, Narcissistic Playground, for joining. If you're still here or passing through, Lizzie805, the same with you. This open chat is generated, and all content comes from Coach Jess, uh, Coach Jess Show. Um, um, my friend Anastasia uh, says, and change your uh, subconscious. And uh, I told you guys about using those big words when you got a boy, <laughs> from, the, boy from the ghetto here. Uh, subconscious beliefs and self-image. Is that para paradigms? Paradigms. Okay. Uh, you people with the big piece of paper and degrees. All right. So, so can they, you Canadians up there are so <laughs> smart. So, yeah. Uh, Cold Water 23 says, God led me to this page. Just needed to know I'm not crazy and what I'm feeling ain't normal. Cheated on daily, lied to daily. It hurts. You began to believe them. It's up to you, coach. And thank you, Liz805, for saying hi. Yeah, it's true. Um, I want to go back to... Something I missed one? You want me to read it? Rolling. No, no. Uh, I want to go back to the coldest winter when they're talking about blinded by the word love. Some people just... And it, it can, again, be the expectations of others or our desire to just be in a relationship. But if that relationship is detrimental to your being, to who you genuinely are, it's not a good relationship. It's abusive and it's scary. And it's not something you need to put up with just to be with somebody else. There are almost 8 billion people on this planet. You do not have to be stuck with anyone. Please remind yourself of that. Um, and, and Coldest Winter, I want to, to thank you uh, for joining us and checking out our page. Um, it, it can be extremely hurtful to be cheated on and be betrayed in that way. Uh, I think we're almost at the end of our show here, but please send me a DM, and uh, I'd love to chat with you a little bit more about what you're, what you're going through and how I can support you. First time ever, Coach, we went past the very marker that I said I would never go past. We have gone one hour and nine minutes. I cannot believe it. I literally uh, op opened my mouth and jumped, jumped in this time uh, because this is episode number five. That may not mean much to anybody here uh, and the uh, few people uh, that have passed through, but it means a lot because I know how much work uh, and effort went into getting to this point. Uh, don't don't take this the wrong way. We have had over 300 and some odd episodes or thereabouts uh, that we have put on. But for Coach Jess, this is huge because she started from scratch, uh, trusting this process, and uh, she has been able to help a number of people since you've been here. So many people tell me that they love your show. 
Uh, but uh, as you said earlier, you're not done. Uh, she's not uh, going to quit. Uh, you've been bullied before. You've endured uh, childhood uh, disappointments and uh, abuse. Uh, you have been a person who's started and adjusted and made changes when you needed to with other things that you started and done. And look at you. You're here now with a show where you're talking with people who admire uh, the positive information you give. You listen to other people's problems. This is not to, to brag about her because technically – uh, uh, I have people that, that I have to brag about because they provide me oxygen. But uh, <laughs> you, on the other hand, I love bragging about. Uh, uh, Tootie Pooper says, if you overcame being bullied as a child, why do I let it happen in adulthood? Um, I'm going to tell you this. Coach Jess wants to tear into that. I don't make the content here. Coach Jess, I know I'm not supposed to do this in front of everybody. But could you possibly consider having that be an element of the next show? Absolutely. We can talk about being bullied, whether as a child or as an adult, or if we have children that are being bullied. Just, uh, just a thought. Uh, but you decide. It's your show. Uh, but everyone, I have to bring this thing to an end uh, because uh, here in California, you know, it, it's time for me to get something to eat. <laughs> so um, everybody, thank you for being here. Um, please. Uh, Please, I want you to know, I appreciate all of you supporting Coach Jess. And I wanted to have this opportunity today to, to brag about her and let her know I am extremely proud of you uh, as a woman and as a human being and taking on this challenge to have a show and not knowing if it was just going to be you and I and nobody else. Uh, all of you have been able to be supportive to her. Uh, she is going to go back into her lab in two in two weeks from now is it gonna be two weeks from now uh, I'll, you know what we'll have to put a schedule out so everybody will know every other saturday uh, there's a pretty good chance though and there's a, a 99.9 percent .9 chance you will not see a show on 9 11 uh but uh, we will have shows uh here for you please reach out to coach jess we will have a show on being bullied uh, whatever you do go to her page her actual professional page her coaching page uh, which is at life plus coaching uh, and any other way that you think you need to reach out to her you can do so the coach Jess uh, show has its own page uh, which is I always forget <laughs> at coach Jess 2021 <laughs> thank you by the way I appreciate <laughs> that uh, any last words coach Thank you all so much for joining us and again making this an incredibly interactive show. I appreciate every single one of you, your questions, comments. I want to hear more from you guys. So DM me, join the Facebook group. I want to see you all there. Thank you. All right, everybody. Uh, it's been fun. Thank you for hanging in with us. We are going to leave now. Um, everybody's saying thank you to you, by the way. Everybody, can you see that? Can you see what's going on there? Yeah. Anastasia yeah. says, thank you for an amazing master class. I like you, girl. <laughs> um, I'm going to support your documentary. Maybe we can get Coach Jess to be in the, in the documentary. We, know, we have, so you know, we have to see. She's so popular. All right, everybody. Love you guys. See you in a couple of weeks. Bye.